Every single mobile application will have critical paths that you as a developer want to keep a close eye on. Whether it's login, checkout, or uploading a photo, understanding the performance of these experiences and how they impact your end user is really important. Sentry makes it really easy for you to track, understand, and fix performance issues across all of your applications. In this video, we'll take a look at how to instrument tracing for a React Native application with a Python backend and understand the performance issues on its checkout flow. After all, shopping season is around the corner and every millisecond counts. Let's take a look. In the React Native application, I've set the traces sample rate to something greater than zero, and I've also set my trace propagation targets to my Python backend. I've also enabled the React Navigation integration to make sure that I'm tracking my time to initial display. Now, when we look at our checkout screen, it's also important to track the time to full display. So I pulled in the Sentry component and I'm waiting for all of the products on the checkout screen to load. I've also set up a custom span to track the process checkout and the initial catalog load by using the Sentry start span, passing it a bunch of attributes that I can later search by. And here's where the API call to my backend will happen and we'll be able to see it in Sentry. Let's take a look. Here is the mobile insights page on Sentry. You can look at things like average time to display, your cold start, and the duration it takes for your transactions to complete. I'm seeing transactions per minute, but I can also take a look at my P50 and my P99 duration. That's taking 14 seconds, not ideal. I also have the transaction list here for all the transactions that are happening in my application. One thing to mention, we also have this mobile vital screen where you can look at things like time to initial display, time to full display, and screen loads across all of your different screens. But if we go back to our transactions, we wanna take a look at our checkout. Here you can see a list of all of the slow transactions. Again, I can filter by fastest, slowest, recent, and outlier. But in this case, we wanna make sure that we are dealing with our slowest transactions. I can see here the breakdown that there's an HTTP request that takes five seconds, and there's also some UI load that is taking 9.5 seconds. If we take a look at this event, we actually get into the transaction summary screen where you can see a waterfall of all of the different operations that are happening in this event. Two things are sticking out to me. There's an initial HTTP GET request that's taking a second, and a POST request that's taking 2.8 seconds. I think we can do better. I'm gonna take a second, I'm gonna make these updates, and see where we end up. One eternity later. Another way to explore traces within your application is to actually head over to our Explore Traces tab, and here you'll see all of the span operations within your applications. Spans are the smallest operation that happens within your app. Think of it like a DB query or a component load. And now that I've made my updates, I'll search for those navigation spans and see where we're at. If we take a look at one of the recent checkouts, we can actually see that the V2 version of the API is only taking 31 milliseconds to load and the checkout transaction is 245 milliseconds. That's a substantial improvement and our users are probably a lot happier. If we go back, I actually wanna show you something else. From the trace view, it's really easy to make alerts and dashboards for things that you really care about. So here, with the same filter that I have, I can actually change and visualize the average span duration across these checkouts. And you can see the graph and the difference my API changes made to our end users. From here, all I have to do is go save as and create an alert for average span duration. I can set the critical threshold to something over, let's say one second, and an action for it to email me whenever something like that happens in the future. I can call it checkouts are slow and now we have an alert rule that will notify me when things go slow and it'll also fix itself when things are improving. And one more thing I wanna do is create a widget for the processing time of my checkout in my dashboards. So I'll head over to dashboards. I have a skip line performance dashboard that I've already set up and I'm gonna create a new widget for checkout processing. First, I'm gonna make sure that I have it set for the last seven days and I'm gonna save that and create a custom widget, call it processing, checkout, target my spans. We're gonna find the average span duration and the filter will be span.operation, checkout.process, add the widget. To get started with anything you saw in the video, head over to our docs or reach out if you have any questions. Thanks, bye.